I promised you I would cover it. It's here. Not only do we have a completely reworked Mythic Plus affix, completely changed, but also finally I got to step foot inside of the new raid, which was going to be somewhat of the make or break of playing Dragonflight. Let's go. Yes. All right, super briefly, I do want to cover the new Thundering. Blizzard took all the criticism of it just not being fun, not being interesting, just kind of sucked. It was just the third affix. Threw that in the bin, which is great to see, and completely changed it to something else. And this version is much, much better. It's not incredible. It's not like when we had Bob Salami. It's not taking portals through the dungeon or anything like that. But what it is, is certainly an improved version. This time around, you're just going to get an orb above you. So you will either have a blue one or a gray one. And then you get like a 15 seconds of 15% increased damage and healing. So something you can really utilize. All you have to do is before the timer runs out is touch someone of the opposing color and the debuff will go away. If you don't do that, you'll get stunned and all sorts of nasty things. You don't want that. It's much more punishing than the previous one if you do get hit by it. But you can also completely ignore it, which is what they've gone with, I believe, is that if you're in like a pug group and you're just, you might be with somebody who's a little bit on the extra spicy side, is that you can just go ahead and clear it straight away. You don't have to worry about it. Min maxes though can get great use out of this. Either they will push it till the very last second or they will base it on when it happens during other mechanics in the fight if you've got a mechanic where you all need to spread out you don't want to be spreading out with this debuff so you're going to want to clear it early or can you get back in time and we'll see all sorts of cool things going on with this it's not amazing it's 15 percent in really inopportune times for the most part it happens completely randomly and you can happen when you just can't get any real benefit from it whatsoever also we had some bugs but this is the early iteration so this is something they'll fix sometimes we had two orbs going on people sometimes we had four and then sometimes we had three which meant someone just couldn't clear it that's unlucky but i assume that's not supposed to happen in the real version i would guess it's supposed to be four every single time one thing that i found very frustrating i was tanking the mythic plus this time is that it heavily heavily favors the healer in 3 dps uh, i did not get the buff at all for 60 to 70 percent of the dungeon and when I did get it, I was shocked and surprised. And I didn't get it again for another, like, few minutes. I think I maybe got it three times throughout the entire dungeon for something that was happening every minute, minute and a half. And we were doing the brand new dungeon, the Academy, which was... Had some bug bosses in it, which is a little unfortunate. Um, but overall it's fine i would like it to be a little bit more consistent i don't think it needs to always favor the healers so the tank who is you know doing damage and doing threat and all those kind of things that they're interested in uh, actually gets the benefit out of it it could do with being even between the healers and tanks instead of heavily it's like it feels like it's like three or four to one uh going on the healers which is i mean it just felt annoying as a tank it's like it didn't exist for me it really didn't. And when it did, often it was just a melee who would just run on me and I could ignore it in some way. So that was my only criticism of it. It's it's much, much better than the previous one. There's opportunity here to utilize it properly and there's opportunity to just ignore it if you're with a player or a group of players and you're not sure what they're going to do. And frankly, damage is the least of your concern with finishing your Mythic Plus in time. So that's a bonus. Let's get on to Vault of the Incarnates. Okay, so we're going to be covering the normal mode. I know uh, the difficulty is a big factor. You know I'm a Mythic Raider uh, through and through. But I wanted to experience the whole dungeon going through rather than committing to 1 a.m. raid testing. As you can probably imagine with my feelings on Shadowlands committing to the 1 a.m. raid testing to test Heroic and Mythic wasn't something I was really ready to jump into. I just wanted to get a feel for the new raid. I wanted to see what they come up with. And my initial thoughts are this. Let's talk about the aesthetic. It's important. You're going to be spending a lot of time in this raid, right? Um, this is very much fitting what Dragonflight is, which is an absolute return to a foundation MMO. I've said this a few times. Some people are a bit confused by that because World of Warcraft has been out for well over a decade. Dragonflight feels like they have seen the popularity of Classic, the Burning Crusade, and Wrath of the Lich King Classic, and have gone... We've kind of strayed from the path. We've walked a different line for a very long time. And now we've given people back the way it used to be. They really prefer that style. And Dragonflight seems to me like they put a, they basically cut the head off the snake in terms of where they were going through borrowed power systems. Uh, overwhelming features that simply didn't pay off. So your war fronts, your island expeditions, and so on. Torghast. All these features that had so much promise, so much potential. And I will always stand 
on that hill and say all those features should be incredible and something that carries through the game but like so many others they get left by the wayside as soon as a new expansion comes out because they were met negatively people didn't like them they were mandatory content and then people were just forced to keep grinding and grinding and grinding over and over again and people frankly hated that whatever it would be it wouldn't matter if the feature was incredible the fact that you're forced to do it week after week after week after week after week uh just grates on people's nerves people like the idea of just not having to do it whenever they don't feel like doing it um and the raid sort of reflects this idea of going back to a simpler time in fact the full aesthetic all the way through it was molten core and uh rage fighter chasm that's what i thought from the moment i went in uh going in dadgar is back dadgar is chilling with the dragons and we're going to do something we haven't seen since i want to say it's cataclysm i believe it was cataclysm which was grim batal uh you're going to get to fly the dragons you get to choose which dragon you want to go with they have different abilities and then you get to do a bombing run to clear the trash to the first boss this is all right i can see this i was a little frustrated i was i thought i was going to be annoyed like try the crusader uh, at first with an overwhelming amount of rp because it's about a minute and a half to two minutes uh that this bombing run takes i was like god we gotta do this every single week but if you're good you can entirely clear the path to the boss and then deal with zero trash which would have taken way way longer than a couple of minutes the first trash is so molten core it's crazy i'm surprised they didn't have lava surges in there as well uh you're gonna be fighting big giants you're gonna be doing some smallies that are walking around around but essentially you've got two linear paths that lead up to the boss there is one um mini boss in the middle called volcanus you're going to be aiming to kill that we didn't know what we were doing so we just bombed everything but it became clear once we actually got on the floor and boots on the ground so we could move into the dungeon uh is that you could go either left or right so you want to focus fire an entire side and clear as much of that trash as possible and even passively just goofing around with everybody on this this was a full pug from my stream uh we cleared most of the trash and just had to deal with the giants uh going up to the first boss so our first boss here was aranog um it's normal mode first boss it's crazy easy uh which is fine now i will say here i'm not going to comment too much on difficulty one some of the, the difficulty curve in here is kind of all over the place <laughs> it's kind of all over the place some bosses are you can fail entirely and still win uh, and the other bosses are you're dead in the first five seconds unless you know exactly what you're doing i would just say that some of the bosses are very mechanically heavy where others are more brute forcible uh is what's going on here so aranog very much brute forcible very simple at least on the normal version is a hey, drop some pools together hey, we the ads that spawn and then kill uh an ad that's cre creeping into the middle which will blow up essentially uh, a ring of death that comes around you i haven't got much to say here blizzard sticking with that theme uh i actually don't mind this in the first raid of the expansion of having the first boss be the entryway get you some gear uh get some things going on and then you get your choices of where to go uh now choices is a big thing they have three doors that are behind aranog that lead to different areas of the raid i believe this is supposed to be a choice that you can make once you get in there you can decide which tier you want to go with which when mythic comes in heroic for guilds that are struggling there you'll get to choose a few bosses to go and mess around with uh, and go and see what you want to do instead of being forced one way as it currently is for testing and it may remain this way you are forced to go one way then a door back at Aranog will open and then you come back and you go back up that way and then the other door opens and so on and so forth uh, to go all the way and clear the pre-end game bosses to go along with uh, our next stop was teros the earth guy so Coming back to the aesthetic a bit, let's talk about the theme. Uh, so this is a themed raid, as all of them are. And this one is about taking the fight to the primal elementalists. The story, I will repeat this till the end of time, the story in Dragonflight is actually really, really good. It's a great setup for what's going on. It's not FF14 quality in story. Some people don't like that kind of storytelling, which is fine. This is World of Warcraft storytelling, but I would say they've set things up to be pretty damn good. Uh, so the primal elementalists, obviously we've got earth we've got fire we've got wind lightning wind lightning uh and so on and so forth um i would say they really really ram that down your throat in here <laughs> like really really ram your ram that down your throat all the way to the end of the raid all the trash is themed about either being ice trash fire trash earth trash lightning trash and it's it gets very old i would say like halfway through the raid it's very very predictable they reuse a lot of the same mechanics uh, over and over again so they have these big ice guys that do ice flow and it kind of came even on our very first run you know it's kind of going to be something that's tedious when in the first run people are mocking the trash and so i wonder what it'll do next and it does this um it's a siege of Ogrimmar style layout 
for those of you who played all the way back in map uh is it's got this kind of sprawling feel to it it does feel like a lot of walking sometimes i'm more used now to being able to get directly to the bosses from my time in ff14 uh coming back to this where you have sort of two and three minute wonders through empty corridors to retrace your steps or to just work through long hallways for the sake of aesthetics and then get to the same trash again uh i get the theme it's but every boss is also themed around this teros that we're about to talk about is earth uh then we're gonna fight like a council of different elements and then we're gonna fight like a frost guy then we're gonna fight a wind guy and then there's gonna be all four of them mixed together uh, it does fit the theme i would have loved a bit more variety in the aesthetic the raid environment and the trash i would loved as we delved deeper into the dungeon that things maybe got darker more sinister uh, rather than it being sort of a very repeating field in one room there's an entire four trash packs that are just entirely colored differently as these elementalists are worshiping it's, like, it's, it's i want to be clear i get the theme it just as gameplay route it feels a little tedious uh but it is trash and you're gonna kill it and move on with your life uh let's talk about a primal council this is one of the bosses we struggled with quite a bit actually we killed this on maybe our seventh or eighth try uh purely because this is a mechanical shit fest from the pull um i read some feedback on the mythic testing i spoke to a couple of the players i obviously know in the mythic raiding scene in the world first scene and they're like yeah <laughs> yeah it's a bit of a cluster and it is a bit of a cluster the idea is pretty simple uh is that there'll be pillars coming up and if you get a lightning debuff the earth drains that away if you get uh the frozen blizzard you stand in the fire uh if you get fire you need to soak that because it's a meteor uh, and then the fire can also remove the pillars to free up some space in the room uh after about six or seven pulls though it became very apparent that this boss is actually really really easy at least on the normal version it just takes setting it up and getting everybody into the rhythm of it it takes those goes and after that i don't think you would ever really wipe on this boss again at least on your chosen difficulty of farm um it's just messy and it feels messy there's a very simple tank swap some interrupting to do um did i like this fight kind of yeah i mean it, it was okay i'd give it like mid-tier for me uh the this, it just feels so messy at times but not in a fun way the floor's constantly being moved you're constantly being shifted to deal with various mechanics um you never feel like settled to do something good uh, a lot of pre-spreading moving around so it feels like one of those fights where your raid leader's comes to saying like now you need to do this now you need to do this uh and move things away let's move on to senarf big ice spider hope you have no arachnophobia friends because this is a big fucking spider uh it actually has a very reminiscence of uh approaching the castle in bloodborne for those of you who have played that game and see the giant spider dangling from the ceiling that's what they've invoked here they've they've gone with that same feeling of an enormous spider dangling from the ceiling uh and going along with it now i'm i'm obviously tanking throughout this dungeon uh senarf was um spectacular visually kind of dull in implementation uh is what i would say i don't hate this fight at all it was fine uh but the i feel like there should be more considering the coolness factor of this giant spider that's winding up its web essentially crawling crawling up to the top of this giant um enclosure this glacier that is inside uh, i really do feel like it could have done more because the main real feel of this is being slowed and dealing with the fact that he tries to web you and throw you off the platform and that can happen at some awkward times it did kill me i'm, not, I'm, I'm always gonna say as a tank i was like moving up the uh moving up the spiral staircase and trying to stay with it so it melees me and does all the things uh, and then obviously i didn't know the timings uh, of when things came in so other than that you can throw yourself into pillars when you get sucked in or you just stand in the webs and deal with it uh, as it goes up and then you have a burn phase at the end so it has a, a sort of similar vibe to I would almost say it's pr in many ways it's kind of identical uh to the boss in emerald nightmare i forget the name of it now uh, i have the uh, i have the game over in front of me but i'm not going back all that way uh but the spider boss there uh where you went to the different platforms you're doing the same thing here and then at the end you have kind of a burn phase just to get the boss killed same thing here uh i will give big shout outs to the slidey feet mechanic um they, they have a mechanic here where you're literally mario sliding around if you stand on certain things or if you push your character in one direction it will slide where it needs to go uh this is actually pretty fun in the final phase where you need to move away and do things like that is you have to position your character in a way that it can slide in the right direction that was actually the most fun i had genuinely i know some people hate this mechanic the people i spoke to really disliked it i thought it was cool it's this little it should be like that we're in an icy cave uh it should be slippery but for the, the guys who want to like plant a 
nuke. They're like, no, 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 I'm losing control of my character. Not really. You still control it. It just takes a little bit of control away. It's not being CC'd. It's not being like not in the sighting or anything like that. It's actually a little bit slidey. So that I did like. So, you know, it's like a six or seven, this boss. It's not bad. Uh, Death of the Ascended. Um... Dathia Ascended is the wind boss uh, with the blowback. I'm not going to say too much about this, purely because on the normal mode, it doesn't really do its mechanic. kind of reminded me of an LFR thing, uh, where you're supposed to be uh, kill an ad and get knocked to a platform which is full of ads. I went back and talked about the Mythic, and they actually kind of like that, uh, where there's a lot more going on than there is in the normal mode. This was just kind of a test dummy, um, and so I didn't get a good feel for it. I will say that um, it, the, the, I like the soft and rage style of the room being completely filled with tornadoes towards the end uh, and really naturally filling up. I'm a big fan of natural uh, natural enrages. That don't, the boss just doesn't lose, suddenly decides to kill you and he could have done that all the time, apparently. Uh, this is good. This is the same as Teros with the room filling up. That was very, very good. Uh, so that style is good, but I don't want to talk too much about it. Let's talk about the big boss, though. Like, this is when we're getting into the final three now, and loot has increased at this point, by the way. So they, they split the loot into, like, three different sections. So you've got the beginning three bosses, which are pretty easy. You'll kill them. Uh, and then you get the middle section where your loot will go up slightly. And then we get to the last three where loot will go up to its sort of highest level before the final boss. And this is where this step up happens. And it did step up. This was a, uh, We one-shot most of the bosses in here. But Kuro Grim Totem, I would say, was our nearly most white boss. This was like seven or eight again. Uh, pulls to figure this out but not for the reasons of just difficulty this feels like a tuning problem to me uh while playing this boss so Kurok grim totem utilizes every element as you can see we've got the frost and the fire and so on and so forth so Kurok grim totem big shaman uh uses all of the elements um now the simple idea is, is this is more on the tanks to sort this out the raid doesn't do particularly much other than stack move and spread out for the most part and that's kind of all the raid has to do this is more on the tanks to control the position of kurog the room is divided into four slices we've got four quarters and each quarter represents a different element and the longer the boss spends in that element uh the higher his damage outputs is going to be based on that element and you can see that under his frame this is all the blizzard new ui by the way it's not bad it's not bad i would still use a custom ui there's some tweaks i'd love to make but for the most part for certainly for a starter ui this is great um you can you'll see like fire you're in the fire section so the fire debuff goes up and it makes a juicy ad uh, that it will spawn at various points and it also spawns one random other uh, ad during that phase that you have to deal with uh simple tank swap going on here um the problem was that we found is just certain buffs were basically insignificant compared to other buffs. Uh, I made the presumption, because we had I went in blind to this, because that's how I wanted to enjoy it, um, that we should probably get fire out of the way first, as typically the fire is the worst one. I would say if I was to guess between the four elements, fire and lightning are usually the worst ones in some way. Lightning usually involves like some chain lightning effects and spreading out, so just an educated guess, we went with fire. Um... And then we guessed that like 20, 8, 15 to 20 debuffs will swap around. So after our first pull, it was very apparent that wasn't enough. We needed to stack more because you essentially then start charging the boss up in different areas again. Um, so we did like maybe four or five pulls doing fire first and then dealing randomly with what the other areas did. And then we figured out it's like, huh, earth and like frost don't really do anything. So let's just try staying there and you could do that for the most part like we stacked frost i think to like 30 and then we could have stayed in earth and one of the guys who was healing this who's a, a raider as well was like we could have just stayed in earth to like 50 stacks and just not bothered with the other ones where the other ones were just way more dangerous like way way more dangerous so i'd say that was a tuning issue i like the idea of the raid but uh, coming back to the criticism and the sort of overview i really like the idea of the raid having control over what they want to deal with it's a fine balance though because you obviously all players are going to lean towards their favored or the easier side being the one they deal with the most so it's towards the end of the fight when attrition is starting to set in is you'll be like well maybe we get the really really hard one done first and keep it low and then the rest of the fight we can sort of manage in the the easier one uh because by the time that gets hard the boss will likely be dead um so that was that was kind of cool it's a fine balance though because it definitely seemed like some of them were just insignificant uh compared to their counterparts going through this but the, the theme of the fight and the idea of the fight is really good and from a lot of the mythic testing i've seen it's like it doesn't seem to be paying off as much as it possibly could uh but it's still a good fight 
Uh, the final boss we tested. There is two more bosses, but uh, the final boss, Razageth, is not available for testing. They're going to keep that one secret. So the final boss we went up against is Grood, Broodkeeper Deerna. And this is the only fight we didn't kill. Not because we couldn't, but because this fight is terrible and nobody could be bothered anymore. <laughs> uh, we did wipe a lot here, but not for reasons that I think are intended. Or we were miss or everybody was missing some sort of clutch mechanic. Again, we went in blind, so there's possibly something we're missing here. Didn't feel like it, but maybe. Uh, Broodkeeper Dionia. Again, it's a gimmicky fight. This is based entirely off Razorgore. Uh, for those of you who've been playing classic vanilla, uh, World of Warcraft Classic, you'll be probably very familiar with Razorgore. Uh, being in mind controlling an orb to control Razorgore to kill all the eggs in the room. Well, this time around, you're killing all the eggs in the room, but there's no mind control element. Uh, what you have here is a very simple idea is that Dionia will just throw down her staff and then you get an on-use option if you're within it. It AOEs the area around it, but if you're in that zone, you get an on-use. And she will start charging up various eggs. And all you have to do is use the on-use and a beam will chase you and you need to put that beam through the eggs and burst the eggs before the, um, the, the powerful dragons spawn from them. So you don't deal with the dragons at all or you get very weakened versions of them. While that's going on, uh, the rest of the group, or half the group, or whatever, just runs around and deals with ever-spawning ads uh, for about six minutes. And it very much brought back that Razor Gore feel of, if you weren't, I was, during my time in vanilla WoW, not the classic version, uh, I was the mind control guy. I would do Burst DX. So I kind of had fun on Razor Gore. Nobody else in my raid had fun on that fight. Nobody else. Standing around in a corner waiting for trash to spawn is just not that fun. Uh, <laughs> that's just the nature of the beast. It's just not that fun. Uh, so this time I was delegated to tanking the trash. Um, and it was not fun. Uh, it was well telegraphed. The fire poles light up and that tells you where the next trash is going to be. There's an enormous, enormous aura the boss has that buffs and heals any trash within that aura. It must be like 40 yards, if not larger. Uh, which means the coordination of this fight, for the most part, is if the, if the ads are going to spawn somewhere near the boss, like in that half of the room, the boss has to be dragged somewhere else so you can actually kill the trash and keep up with the waves while putting some damage into Deanna, uh, into Broodkeeper. And yeah, it's about six minutes of that. Uh, the reason we wiped was not out of any fun, uh, but purely because um, the transition feels bugged, might not be bugged, feels bugged. The final bursting of the eggs doesn't work. Uh, and then you all get frozen, which is very easy to clean out. Uh, but then you have this weird transition where the aura for the ads remains um, until the final eggs are burst. But you can't control that as a player. What's What I believe is supposed to happen is you finish the eggs properly like you would at Razor Go. Uh, the aura drops and then the tanks can come together. Because once the uh, once Deonia has lost all her eggs, she becomes enraged. And she has an ever stacking damage buff, uh, which... And she also prevents the main tank from being able to heal. Now, we were both playing DKs. As you can imagine, not being able to heal is kind of a bummer. Uh, so you need to tank swap very, very regularly. But you can't also bring the ads over. So there's a couple of very obvious solutions to this. Uh, have someone tart and run with the remaining ads because they need to be killed before I can drag them into the boss because otherwise those ads will just purely heal up and do extra damage and kill everybody. Uh, have a third tank who kind of just fucking AFKs or tank swaps with the tank during phase one, doing nothing else. Uh, those kind of things are very obvious solutions which then lead you to just killing the boss. We didn't really want to do that. Uh, we just like, this transition should probably work. So we once we did it like three or four times and it was just a tedious waiting around uh, and trying to bloodlust the ads down so we could kill kill all the ads so they couldn't be buffed uh but by then it was kind of a mess and a shit show at that point uh but then you just kill the boss anyway uh, off the back of that so this was easily my worst fight like it's about it fe i i would be hesitate to see the footage and maybe chris can actually put the time up of how long it takes from the pull so you actually get to phase two uh but it feels like it's like six or seven minutes and it's so tedious. It's just so goddamn tedious. And I'm glad I went in blind because like I said afterwards, I went and spoke to some people uh, and they were like, yeah, it's the worst fight ever. <laughs> this fight sucks. It's so bad. Uh, I would really like to see something different done here uh, with controlling eggs. Perhaps there's beneficial eggs. 
something like that where it's like if you leave these eggs up there's actually a benefit to it you know something where you have a little bit more interest uh or perhaps you can choose where the ads spawn or choose the type of ads by i don't know throwing egg juice over the spawn points or something 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 rather than just killing ads and kind of tickling the boss for about six or seven minutes and then trying to bloodlust the boss down uh i think fights like razor go only uh, are popular i mean i could be wrong here I, I i didn't play wow classic as you know i played the launch but not when uh, blackwing lab is available um i don't recall many people thinking of razor go fondly um as a fun fight uh so to return to that environment and do it again these days i was like oh kind of cringe actually kind of cringe to go back here overall then just from a normal mode perspective i would give the uh raid like a seven out of ten a six or seven out of ten it's overall pretty good uh, it's hard to judge until we get into the mythic which is the mode i enjoy the most uh but i, I think this is good enough start there's plenty of bosses here that people are going to be able to pick up and understand they're visually stunning i would say that i would wish the uh like i say my criticisms are kind of minor the trash is a little repetitive but there isn't a great deal of it by any means it's just it's kind of the same in every room uh some of the environments like senas environment is so good dathia's environment is really really good uh even the opening with the bombing run makes sense and can actually make your raid better hopefully it won't lead to frustration uh with somebody who's like who slacked why is this thing still up like why are we clearing all this trash i can see that happening a little bit but it's still only going to take you three or four minutes to clear the trash if you goof it up uh and the only boss i genuinely like disliked was broodkeeper that was the only one I genuinely was like, oh, this sucks. And I just can't even be bothered pulling this boss again. Because uh, that's how I felt at the end of it. It wasn't that we were we were very close to defeating this boss. Um, we, on our next, I would say we would kill it on the next couple of pulls, but absolutely nobody could be bothered. It was like redoing this trash. Oh, special shout outs to the voice acting. That really needs to be changed on Deernia especially if you're progging it uh, I, I typically don't play with sound on but i do for a first run and uh the voice acting lines repeating over and over and over and over again she, only, she seems to have like four lines of dialogue that she's screaming constantly and for six minutes oh boy i've never seen so many requests from so many people to please turn off the voice acting for this fight that's not a good place to be all right guys so that is uh the vault of the incarnates our first impression obviously can't look at the last boss it's not available but overall not bad not bad i would say it's on par with my first impressions of castle nathria uh there's some good great bosses in there there's some reasonable bosses and plenty of bosses that'll get you some nice early loots as well so for a, for the first raid of the first start pretty good i wouldn't say it was as striking to me as Uldia uh for a first raid but it's it's a return to something they're definitely making a point with this that this is like a molten core this is going back to that style that you remember it's dragons again it's going back which is a lot of what dragonflight is about it's going back to that foundation that they're hopefully going to build on so i have a very positive outlook on this thank you so much for listening guys and i'll see you again Bye bye